My name is Dennis Foley, but my name is also Dennis Lower. My name is Dennis Morris because they're my grandmother's and my great-grandmother's names. And my name is Dennis Garlic, uh, which is another name. My name is Dennis Atkins, which is the previous Dennis uh, generation. My name is also uh, Yellamundi, which is not the, the Darig Yellamundi, that's the Shoalhaven Yellamundi, but I don't claim anything to that land. But he was the father of the father of my bloodline, my Aboriginal bloodline. So that's the, the complications of who you are. And my name, well, the folly goes right back to Ireland. And I've gone to Ireland and I've stated who I am and I've talked in Aboriginal and the people around me have gone, ooh, they, they could feel the spirits. But they could feel the Irish spirits, they could feel the traveller spirits, they could feel the Aboriginal people of Ireland uh, who were getting stirred by me speaking. where Aboriginal beliefs right around the world, any Indigenous beliefs, everything is based on a holistic concept of the connection between the physical and the, um, and the realms that aren't physical, that are connected. And the intangible heritage is very rarely taken into consideration, where for the Aboriginal people, the intangible heritage is just as important, if not more important, than the, than the tangible. We used to come in and just talk and, and spit a bit of water around. Well, now I do the bull roar and it goes out a lot further and, uh, and attracts the people. It's only now that I'm an old fella uh, and I can do it and I can do it in front of women. I do it now because you never would have seen me do it before when I was younger. I would have done it in privacy. So it's just to let the men and the women know the spirits that I'm here and um, and I, I do it now just to let them know that, yeah, we want to talk and we want to uh, sit down and be at peace. So that's why I do it now, just to give the sign. Probably the most important thing for all the different sites here is just look around you. There's the birds, there's wallabies, there's the trees, and that's the most important thing, I think, the trees and the bushland. Um, the fact that they've planted native scrub, they've planted the, the indigenous species, and there's a continuation of that. I think that's far more important than actually the internment. That's what's really important, you know, the ecological management of these areas. So you've got microsystems, ecological microsystems um, continuing on. And that's, I think that's very, very important. Yeah. You've got these places of peace and quietness and, um, and I think that's more important. You've got these little jewels of, of bushland scattered throughout the uh, suburbs. The intangible asset of, a, of this place, of a cemetery, is, is the, the very things that I was just talking about, the trees, the, the streams, the way that the water can still percolate, um, the way that it's a resting place, but it's also a place, place of peace. Uh, it's a place of quietness. Um, so I think they're the more important things is the continuation of Aboriginal cultural beliefs. Uh, the human world, the sacred world, the spiritual world. It's a continuation of that. This country here is linked to the waterfall uh, at the top of Arabine. So when you go over the back country, uh, the walkway is connected to there. But the, um, if you thought about a pathway, the pathway is connected to the hospital and then it goes down to Manly. So the main pathway went up there. And then we always knew this as a megafauna site. And, um, and it came up here and it continued right around to, to the um, showground, St Ives showground. Yeah, St Ives showground from my reckoning should be that way. And that's all megafauna and that's all me megafauna country being the goanna, the, the, the giant goanna. And she lived and had a baby so all in this country here. So that's how it was taught to us as kids. Well, we were taught there were six seasons, and that's really interesting because when I saw Fran's book, it all came back to me. What was really interesting, we have one season, it only goes for two weeks in, in this country. It roughly goes for two, two, maybe four or six weeks. Around about, there was a, um, there was a fair, and uh, there was a, a, a fair that came every year. And those two weeks coincided with a westerly wind, which was ice cold, it blew down off the Blue Mountains and it was ice cold and in those two weeks that's when all the old people would die, all the babies would die. And usually it was in uh, July, um, June, July 
and, uh, and then when I saw Fran's image of the six seasons, that came straight back, you know, of all the old stories. I was fortunate, I was invited across by the elders in Stradbroke Island. And I, we were sitting down and one of the other men that was with me, um, a wonderful guy from Stradi, he asked the old man and he said, what are we going to do here? This, you know, what are we going to do in 40,000 years? Because that was the figure that was bandied around that we'd been here for 40,000 years. What are we going to do another 40,000 years? And the men quickly snapped to us, really put us in our place and said, well, that's your job. And we said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, you've got to go out and educate them. You've got to teach them. You've got to teach them about the beauty of this land because the custodianship of this land is not going to stay with you. You're not going to be alive in 40,000 years. You've got to train and educate the white fella to take on the role and the responsibility of custodianship. And that role automatically in my mind went to the, um, the people that you know, look after the land, uh, the uh, care groups, the green groups, you know, uh, land care. When I came back, I knew that that role of custodianship uh, was really important, but custodianship has got to be shared. You can't do it by yourself. And my family aren't interested. Um, they, they're not ready to step up. My little sister is, but um, she's got other abilities and skills. And my young nephew, he's starting to come around and he wants to learn more. And, and they will in time, and they'll take on more role. there's something out there that's bigger than us and can't explain it. And all through my life, when I stop believing, when I, I'm at the bottom and I've just had it, and uh, the spirits will come to me and, and let me know. Now I, I know they're always there, but yeah, there has been times in my life when I just didn't believe anymore. And um, the Rainbow Laura Keat is a classic. Yeah, she's, uh, she's a connection between uh, the Angophora and the heavens and she flies around the same as the yellow-tailed black cockatoo. The red-tailed black cockatoo is a sign of rain and a sign of uh, thunder spirits, uh, lightning spirits. So the yellow-tailed black cockatoo is, um, is the sister to the, the, um, the uh, rainbow lorikeet, which is signifying um, naughty children or, or active children because her, their creation comes from the rainbow snake. And that's the only thing we ever talk about, the rainbow serpent in this country, it's through the lorikeet. Now, we, don't, we don't have a rainbow serpent here as such, um, but the lorikeet came from the rainbow serpent. It's our only, only creation story that's linked to her, um, which is really interesting. We live our lives in parallel with nature so that we can have a uh, sustainability, and that's where we're different to the non-Indigenous. At the end of the day, it's to walk in the country and walk together. Yenibu, that concept of Yenibu, be as one, um, and to, to walk and to be as one. It's so important, yeah.